Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as South Rhodesia in which we're playing with Herbert James Stanley as well as Godfrey Martin he Huggins in which we'll talk about them later but we have the economy completely crashes fantastic urgent news has just reached Salisbury this morning of the economic disaster that's begun to envelop the globe Black Monday as it currently is being cold a senior once prosperous economy plummeting in a fiery nosedive towards the red the ruling bigwigs in the United Federal Party have been left to action to try and stop the financial hemorrhaging that has affected our market since the start of the Black Week. Whether the des desperate attempts at austerity and economic triage remains to be seen, as the hardy and stoic of Rhodesians once again steal themselves in the face of hardship. Stay calm and keep a stiff upper lip. Oh boy. Apparently we're in a, a border war too, defeated the border following a clash between southern Rhodesian and Zambian forces in the border area. Our ambassadors are requested a ceasefire. Several assaults on South Rhodesian positions failed with heavy casualties during the battle, raising concerns in the South Rhodesian military about the capabilities of our forces. Which is not bueno at all. But I wonder if we can get any... Can we get enough political power here? 13 days, 26 extra political power? Probably, honestly, not. I'd like to go to extensive, but I'd also like to go to early mob. You lose 0 0.05 political power, but it does help you out quite a bit with building stuff. We're going to go there and then do that. Oh, boy. Then you have PM Apparel. Our economy is closely linked with South Africa. <coughs> And just as black money said South Africa, it's hit us. The political and economic ramifications of this are great. Now the United Farmers Party must respond to the crisis. Eagle up north. Middle Africa is our main target. The hunting invaders have snatched land, rightfully belonging to the king in an unjust act of aggression, and we must not offend against them. As long as Middle Africa continues to throw no well, it can never be safe. Yeah, pretty much. No political power. Pretty normal. Uh, let's go with the party's direction next. <coughs> And you can see we're going to go with a pretty hard right path. National populists in this campaign. The United Party is a broad coalition, operating with many diverse ideals and figures. In these turbulent times, a solid direction is needed for the party. Land issue. The Land Apportionment Act is a restricted the ability of uh, the ability of Native Africans to own land, ensuring that little amount of land they could own was infertile and virtually unusable. The immediate effects of the act have led to poverty and overcrowding on reservations, and many wish to see the act rescinded or at least reformed to follow with update the Land Apportionment Act. Land ownership in Rhodesia has always been an issue. The Land Apportionment, Apportionment Act was made to help resolve it. However, it has only seemed to exacerbate existing issues. With the land issue still relevant, we may seek to change the act and reform land ownership in Rhodesia, appointing a new governor. The town has come to review the status of governor of southern Rhodesia. Some have suggested appointing a new governor, while others have suggested simply sticking with Herbert James Stanley. Others have said that in these trying times, where Rhodesia is run by Boers, Natives, Syndicalists, and Middle Africans, we have no need for a governor, and that the Prime Minister must have the authority to act unilaterally. In the event we do appoint a new governor, several qualified candidates have been suggested for the post, however. In the end, the Rhodesian government has recommended one person for the post. So, how about James Stanley? Uh, I'll be honest, I have no idea. Hmm. I really have no clue. Rhodesian front, huh? Honestly, it doesn't really matter, because for this one, because we're going to go nap out for this campaign, eventually we'll go a different path someday, because there's so many different paths for each country here, but... Nap out Rhodesia, elect the UFP, go down the right branch of the center tree, rock the boat, and ally with Burke. Goodbye. God, free Marty. Yeah, then, so... Down the right branch of the center tree, rock the boat, and ally with Burke. Cool. Oh, wait, what? Oh, whoops. Oh, crap. Hey, we're going to do the land issue next. The cabinet question. The United Federal Party has already been a long party with internal contradictions. A party which formed out of several left-wing parties is generally regarded as left-wing as such. And even campaign on semi-left-wing policies, however, many high-ranking party members, among them party leader Godfrey Huggins, actually subscribe to conservative thought. Having won the first elections of independent southern Rhodesia, has rushed this issue to the breaking point, a cabinet now needs to be formed. And it seems likely that Godfrey Huggins will become the next prime minister. The question is then whether Huggins will extend an olive branch to the left wing of the, of the unity bar, party unity, or employ or simply appoint ministers that support his own position. Both wings deserve representation. The left wing is misguided. Social conservatives will join us, eh? With Field to the right. Winston J. Field's faction of the UFP has gained influence by the day, with Huggins' faction slipping away from the prominence in the party, many are turning to the Field as he leads the UFP into the future. Focusing on a specific faction will increase the likelihood of the UFP collapsing in on itself. Things happen, my friends. Things, of course, happen. <gasps> Handsome. Anyways. Now, pop. Rock the boat. And out of the brook. I'm gonna rock the boat. Ian Smith can become a leader, huh? Wow. If you play until 1945. Oh, God. That's a long time. That's almost nine years. That is nine years. I can count. Sometimes. Oops. 
Well, we need to line issue it anyway. Next, what do we have here? So, colonial government. Oh, possible reformation of land apportionment, apportionment act. So, it's a colony's foundation. A heated point of conflict between white immigrants and the natives has been the issue of land rights and ownership in the colony. With the past acceptance of the land apportionment act, no native African in the colony could purchase lands outside of predetermined native purchase areas or NAPs, essentially creating native reservations. While some white settlers are free to purchase land nearly anywhere. Though the recent efforts of black money still being felt, some feel it may be time to reform this act one way or another. On one hand, many MPs believe that the act to be far too restrictive to both our cultural and economic growth, and that natives must be allowed to purchase some lands off the NAPs, or at least have the NAPs be enlarged as overpopulations become a rampant issue in these zones. On the other hand, some MPs believe the act to not be restrictive enough, blaming the native landowners for being the most of the troubles black money has caused or exposed. Regardless, this bill has greatly inflamed debate within a parliament, and a decision on its passage would take countless hours of arguing and compromise. Eventually, the parliament door opened and had an announcement was of course made. The final result was, undergoes friendly reforms. Uh, strengthened and further harshened. Yeah. That sounds like fun. And of course, we're going to update this too. More resource efficiency gain, better recruitable population factor. Because, oh, why not? And, oh, and the Republic of Ireland. What? I should have read that one. What is going on in Ireland? Oh, God. They went market liberal. Michael Collins doing his Michael Collins things. I do want to get some daily army XP. I think that'd be good. What do we have for army focus? Max adjustment, attacking defense quarter territory, plus point two. Uh, breakthrough's not bad, speed's not bad too as well. Uh, a united Rhodesia. UFP's falling apart, social conservatism. Increases inter-party cohesion. Wait, so what does it want us to do? Mm -hmm. And for the elections, a day in April to start. How do I get net pop? So he's gonna elect somebody. And go for the election. A day in April. Oh wait, huh. A balance Rhodesia. This is pretty good, but we're gonna go with update this first. So we need to elect the UFB. In the second election, the Rhodesian Front Party can win, or coup if you choose the other party members. The right wing of the UFP. Uh, would that UFP in peril? Nice. United Rhodesia, the UFP has managed to overcome its hurdles and emerges as a coherent political bloc. While many still face with opposition from both the sides, the Prime Minister can rest easy knowing that the Jack was not too soon tears limb, uh, his party limb from limb, of course. Signs new constitution. In a day in April, huh? No, we're doing whatever we can here first, you know. I like the 28 day focuses, that's pretty nice. Total victory, huh? Yeah, we're gonna start working on this stuff too. Defense, entrenchment. I always like org. Guns and Butter is always one of my favorites to do. Holy crap. How do they win so easily? I've never seen that happen. That's cool. Complaints with the United, United, United Left Wing. Uh, complaints. And after you do this too. Left wing of the United Party has grown increasingly dissatisfied with Prime Minister Huggins' refusal to appoint left wing ministers in his cabinet. The left wing of the party has been deprived of most of its influence on the executive and thus governmental policy. Progressive United Federal Party MPs are now up in arms and threaten to block government legislation if they're not satisfied with the Labour Party and the Rhodesia Party. Let them scram, scream, try and appease them. We're going to lose a PP anyways. Bombings of Britain. Day in April. Unable to successfully govern. The UFP coalition has decided to call a snap election. United Party hopes to come out on top of this with a large enough share of seats to control the government while Labor hopes to take the mantle of the government away from the UFP. Uh, if you want to do this, please go ahead. Invest. Join and invest. We'll enjoy and invest for now. Assist with the economy. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, better consumer goods. We have one. we got to be sending away. We'll get more factory output. Do we have any factories at all? We have nothing here. We literally have nothing here. Well, we can leave it. But you never know, they might invest in us. Well, I guess we're going to the Communist Party? Day in April's next, whatever. 
Elections are to be held. The second USB cabinet. Labor victory. All right, we'll see you next. Defense of Rhodesia would be nice. Well, the Huns of the North, Rhodesia is in grave danger. We must do everything to defend our homes. Yeah, makes sense. Um... Hey, supplies from the North. Arms are being secured from the Northern Brethren. Though it does look a shame to use German weaponry, in times of need, one must look beyond such distaste for the greater good. Mobilize the reserves. A rally cry has begun to Salisbury. It's being heard as far as Broken Hill. Young men are flocking to our cause to supplement our forces to fight off the Boer menace. Elections, please. So. Our Prime Minister seeks to develop Zal Parliament. The United Party is quickly tearing itself apart. A driving opposition to the government of their own party grows increasingly resolute and hinders the government's ability to pass a policy slowly. Recognizing that this current situation is untenable, the Prime Minister's contact with the Labour Party opposition has come to agreement. The Labour Party will join a coalition with the, within the UFP to help oppose Labour and the UFP's right wing. Seeing an opportunity in this newfound cooperation to wipe out the Conservative or Reform opposition, the Prime Minister now petitions the Governor to dissolve the South Rhodesian Parliament and write new led elections. However, it's also clear that the combination right united and the Labour Party already have a majority in the current mandate, which has been just elected a few months ago. The electorate needs to test this realignment. Day in April. Nice. It's moving pretty fast, which we do like. Splash and North are also very good, too. Hey, look at that. Factories. Um, soft attack cap. Artillery. Uh, okay, then. Oh, wow, we actually have quite a few things here, huh? If anything, I mean, just normal planes would be nice. I guess we have no normal planes. All right, then. Whatever. Mobilize reserves. That'd be nice. South Rhodesian Territorial Forces. Ribna. Oh, look at this. Uh, following the fall of the Huggins government and the subsequent realignment uh, between the right UFP and the Rhodesia Party, the government's called new elections for the Southern Rhodesian Parliament. As is tradition, all Southern Rhodesians to fulfill their proper, uh, property quotations or qualifications can vote. So I expected that the new R United Rhodesia Party would win in the landslide, but the Labour Party, and now much smaller leftover of the United Federal Party, has been campaigning viciously in the hopes of perhaps enabling themselves to deny this new political behemoth the majority and form a Labour led coalition between the two parties instead. So those should join uh, Democrats will join the coalition. Labour secures a surprise victory to the systems of the UFP's left. Rhodesian Labour Party. Yeah. So we have the elections here. Fantastic. Um, that pops. Put it on the right bench. Rock the boat. Now it's Burke. Oh, yeah. In the second election, so we're using part of the front line. Or a coup if you choose to hang the, the other members of parliament. Wow. So we're radicalizing everybody here. So. Rhodesian Front Party, huh? Rhodesian Liberal Party. Go down the right branch of the center tree. So, then we have fixing the damage. Interesting. Go down the right branch. Continue where we left off. Cities. Ship of States. Sasko says his best rock the boat. Ah! Land husbandry. New pioneer columns. Sends our land. Removed threat by Middle Africa. Interesting. Continue where we left off. So we gotta go down this way. Now that we have a comfortable mandate to pursue our policies, we can continue implementing our measures just as before the election. Without interference from the opposition, we can finally and fully implement our agenda and then rock the boat. Persuade labor centrists. It's not bad. The fate of Hugens 
With the UFE practically falling apart under the watch of Prime Minister Godfrey Huggins, or Huggins, many have been question the merits of running Huggins as the UFP's candidate in the next election. Many of them the parties left are disillusioned with him, and wish to see one of their own at the forefront of the party, and suggested none other than the Honorable Winston Joseph Field Todd to take the post. Other more moderate influences disagree with this course of action, stating that Huggins has just had a fine hold of the situation as is. Zim. Jer. We need change in Rhodesia, that much is clear. The UFP is increasingly divided, and we must take radical means to unite the party. Stamina to stir things up, Rhodesia will never be the same again. Absolutely. Where are we at with this? Ah, the manpower, yeah, we could use that, and that's pretty good overall. Continue where we left off. Delightful. Oh, so what do we have here? Stuff we can spend. Max entrenchment, experience gain. I want I want benefits. Speed, honestly, we could probably use speed in a place like this, you know. Honestly, if we could train one of these guys too, that'd be fantastic. Oh, join the group? Yeah, that'd be good. Now, rock the boat. In with Burka. Huh? We're using formal support government. This could have consequences. Get political power, I like that. I'll get some guns. It's kind of important. Uh, to the right of the aisle sits uh, the Rhodesian Front, where the leader of Denzel Lardner Burke. Burke, while not completely supportive of the UFP, is more than willing to work with us if we can stop Rhodesia from being destroyed from the perfidious Reds. Not a bad idea. A little ahead of time, but that's all right. We don't have that many uh, folk, folk uh, slots to use. We're gonna rock that there, Bo. See what happens. In with Brecca Strong Rhodesia. That'd be pretty nice. I like stability. Uh, political power goes down. Fixing the damage. It's not bad to do as well. Eventually, we're gonna have to do it. Black Mud has not been kind to us with much of our industry shutting down. Thanks to our on-time benefactors, we have the funds and the means to, oh god, have the Italian government fall, no, have the means to uh, make most needed repairs. That'd be great to do. Ooh, look at that. You never know. Last time I started training, we got attacked. All right, Humphrey, let's see what you got. Need a little bit of stability, but that's all right. It happens. Although South Africa did manage to stay out of the German hands following the 1925 revolution, we are still a colonial government. Our economy is now pegged to South Africa. And what remains of the entire political options are limited, of course. And with Burke, you know. And then ally with them. Cool. That's all we gotta do. Cool. That's a new Navy command focus. Social system. Um. Anglo-American cooperation. Huh. What about over here? Oh, Army fuel consumption. Strat bombing, huh? I'll go with that one for now. Because you know why not. What's wrong with Rhodesia? The UFP's vision of Rhodesia is a, is a land as strong as it is great. With the United Front Party so solidly at Rhodesia's helm, their vision for the nation will be reality far into the future. As long as the UFP controls uh, Rhodesia, our nation will never die. New Pioneer Columns. Just as the Rhodes first rode the white settlers into Rhodesia, new pioneers rode into Rhodesia for a better chance at life. A land of plenty and a land of riches await the brave ones who seek until gain by moving our, to our mighty homeland. True North takes a feature, huh? Whoops, I don't want to do that one next immediately. Uh, I'll do this one. Fixing the damage. This stuff is gray and all, but we don't have to have it yet. Hmm. 
Motorized, Rings of the African Rifles, Radio. Form the King's Rhodesian Army, huh? Yeah, would you look at that? So close, but not quite there yet. Responsible government at last. Oh, wow! Nice. Nice job, guys. Expanded infrastructure. Southern Rhodesia is fairly far away from basically everywhere besides South Africa. If we were to diversify our currently predominant agricultural economy to seriously compete with our South African neighbors, we need to work on our national infrastructure. The yeah, internal UFP elections. As our fierce rivals in the Labour Party finished their electoral, internal elections, the Great United Federal Party shall too undergo internal regular organization. The election for a new party had is never an easy or quick task, but its effects are felt for generations, similar to the Labour Party's three wing divide. Our UFP, too, has felt that three main wings that are vying for control. The two are prominent of these factions are the Social Conservative Wing, led by Winston Field, and the Social Liberal Wing, which is headed by Godfrey Hugens. As these two factions go for each other's throats in the debates, Desmond Lardner Burke and his Rhodesian front have stalked the conference like a honey lion, gathering support from under the nose of his opponents. As the final day of the party convention ends, who will be chosen to be the face of the new face of the United Federal Party? Social Conservatives. You lose political power. Flamboyant, huh? Flamboyant brute. Social liberal faction wins. Hey, D Daily Army 2 game is pretty good. MPs lower the Rhodesian front manage to take hold of the party. Whoa, well, would you look at that? You lose political power. He's a local tyrant. You know what happens. Oh! Oh no. What happened here? Look at this guy. This seems pretty nice. We're gonna fix the damage though first. A responsible government. Oh. Support the southern. Oh. Fixing the damage. <laughs> All stuff can wait. Expand the infrastructure. We're ready for these guys somewhat. Uh, effects of. That can have a crash. Not nah, boy, no. Such cash crops like sugar are vital to the recovery of the South Rhodesian economy. With this in mind, we should support local sugar refineries via the means of stimulus packages. Develop the Bulawayo industry. Bulawayo has always been the center of the Rhodesian industrial hub. With some further investment from the Entente, we can further develop vital industrial hub. That'd be great. Uh, expand the University College of Rhodesia. An initiative has been put into place to expand the University College of Rhodesia to promote the immigration of in intellectuals to, oh my god, come on, Southern Rhodesia and allow for trades uh, to be taught in an effort to kickstart the South Rhodesian economy. And we would like to, of course, subsidize North Maize farmers. Akin to our sugar industry, our maize production must be supported if we are to further recover our industries with subsidies being afforded to our farmers. Mm, I like more political power, though. That'd be nice. I always want more PP, though. Oh, look at that. Oh, we got better effects. Nice. Uh, appointing a new governor. The time is going to review the status of the governor of Southern Rhodesia. Some have suggested appointing a new governor. Well, this is suggested simply sticking with Herbert James Stanley. Oh, I think I heard this earlier, so here we go. There you go. Threatened by Middle Africa, hulking and dangerous, a hunting threat in the north as much as stops in 1921, and again in 1925, with Odysseus split in half and her brothers in Kenya, Uganda, and Nigeria forced under their protection. Even in top brass dots, we can stand a chance against the might of Middle Africa. Pretty normal civil war. What else we got here? There you go. Oopsie, not bad. Mm. Nationals and utility companies. You want political power. Subsidize the companies. You lose political power. So does Rhodesian Railways. Nationalize the railways. ID investment. Um, what's like another city? Such a Supreme Court, huh? 
Nationalize or nationalize? Subsidize. You get negative fifteen percent. And fifteen percent you get fifteen percent better consumer goods factors and better fifty percent better construction speed. Uh five percent construction speed. Honestly, subsidizing seems like the better idea. Instead of nationalizing the utilities, it'd be better off we were just to give some subsidies to improve the growth versus nationalizing them. Under the control of the government, we'll better be able to run the utilities of our nation. We do get a free city though. But overall, you get more political power and better consumer goods factors. Of course, with this one, you do get a city, which is pretty nice. We're going to subsidize it though. Yeah, we're going to do that one anyways. That'd be good. Subsidize or decent railways. Instead of nationalizing the railways, it'd be better if we could just give them subsidies to improve their growth. Did I just read this one? I just did. Counter inefficient work. Inefficient work has been a long standing problem with Rhodesia, and it's about time we tackle it. I'm going to subsidize them. So then after that, we get economic reconciliation. Tariffs with South Africa. Huh, oh, do I want tariffs or not? Relations are still rocky between Salisbury and Pretoria, and neither are wishing to make any accommodations towards each other. With us, we must impose harsh tariffs on any goods that hail from South Africa such, until the time that such accommodations are made versus economic reconciliation, though we had our differences. Diplomats from both South Africa and Rhodesia have been looking to East Engines. With us in mind, trade between the nations is normalized with both nations accepting each other's goods. Well, I mean, they're what? They're, what are they following? What ideology are they? Oh, social conservatives. We're not completely opposed to each other. Uh, I can invest some 50 PP. Hopefully, get something out of this eventually. I guess it would have been better if I'm doing that one, but whatever. Uh, we can do economic reconciliation. Why not? We won't we'll get any political power, but that's alright. Oh, you lose even more political power. Oh, uh, we're so good on terms. Economic reconciliation. Invest in the RCLAR and R Limited. The group has proven themselves to be a worthy company of investment. It'd be wise to help the growth. We're going to lose a lot of political power. Canada supports the federal government. Um, if you don't need this, please go ahead. Well, yeah. I was saying independence. So there's this. It requires all the following. Huh. I wouldn't mind economic boom. Oh, that'd be very good to do. Eventually, we'll get a responsible government at last. Will the nation stable, the time's coming to build a responsible British style government in our lands. That'd be nice. We've got a lot to do here, though. Draft the constitution, expand native reserves, establish the Gondharazo reserves. I would like to draft a constitution eventually, though. The constitution will provide us with stability and certainty of future governance, so they will aspire to the constitution for Southern Rhodesia to be established. Wait, where are we supposed to get some other guy? Oh, you can wait till 1945. You ain't supposed to get that one guy. We're just gonna lose more political power, that's all. That's all it is. Just lose more political power, because why not? You know, we're here to lose. PP, at least. Hey, construction's nice. Mm, yeah, that'd be pretty good to do overall. After what that was like an eternity, it seems the initial economic freefall that occurred as a result of the dread of Black Monday has been nearly in reverse, and a brave colony marches on to a more prosperous future. Under the stewardship of the UFP, we have saved our people and their ways of life, however. We now escape our near immolation without being left with the scars and marks common to such an engagement. And it'll be some years before our slice of the dark kind is fully healed and our economy is recovered. Financial collapses also reveal cracks in the facade of the UFP's seemingly unstoppable popularity. It seems an actual challenge from the Labour Party for the soul of the nation is not as fanciful as it was once seen. Rhodesians are once more brave the harshest of trials. Fantastic. Oh, we have a responsible government at last. Fantastic. Because we're going to be doing a lot of stuff here. We've drafted a constitution as we read earlier. We're going to expand the native reserves. The native reservers are small and the people are overcrowded. So we'll naturally expand these reserves to we'll offer some prosperity to the native communities. Staff the Supreme Court. Essential part of the responsible government is accountability. It's creating a Supreme Court to reside of the interpretation of laws in the Constitution. Establish Ganarazu Reserve. Uh, the Ganarazau is vast and filled with beautiful wildlife. We must keep it this way. We should consider declaring a national reserve in order to better protect its natural state. Absolutely. Happy 1930 days. We're just kind of beelining through all this stuff right now. We'll see if, oh, what we actually do in the end, though. Um, sure, why not?
Oh, people have killed all the West Indies, huh? Venezuela wanting to go to war? Oh. Hmm. Look at that. Probably not going to need any carrier stuff. Probably not. But you never know. Um, except Supreme Court establishes a southern Rhodesia currency bomb. In order to better match currency situation here in Rhodesia, we must establish a currency board which will guide the process. I think that'd be a great thing to do. After this, we'll have the responsible government, and then we'll probably do expanding the native reserves. Anglicize the bureaucracy. Now that we are for the first time beholden only to our own destiny, we no longer need an account for the Afrikaans, a southern South African language rarely spoken north of the Limpopo, and a bureaucracy English and only English shall do. Okay, like I said, we're going to do that one. Combat poaching. Oh, that'd be great. Poaching has been a large threat to the Bodizian wildlife. It's essentially we take measures to eliminate the poaching of the wildlife. I think that'd be great. We get like no political power now, which sucks. What do we got here still? Fair by Middle Africa, land issue. The Land of Apportionment, Apportionment Act of 1930 was a segregationist measure that governed land allocation and acquisition prior to independence. The act made no provisions for blacks who chose uh, an urban lot because towns were designated as white areas under the Land Apportionment Act of 1930. The right of Africans to hold ownership was rescinded. Africans would be allowed to purchase land in areas known as native purchase areas. Only 81 native purchase areas were allocated very close to native areas. Over 51% of the land, or almost 20 million hectares of land, was assigned to as white area, while 20, almost 30% was given to indigenous people. It should be known that during this period there were only about 50,000 white settlers as opposed to over a million indigenous people. Most of these white settlers were acquiring this land for speculative purposes. Africans were relegated to very little and fertile, fertile areas, while there were uh, white counterparts were given fertile land at very cheap rates at, or no payment at all. Sounds about right. Border infrastructure with South Africa would be wise to set up border fortifications to defend from possible incursions from a southern aggressor. Issue passports, essential for a new nation to get passports to our citizens. That only makes sense. Ooh, protect your wildlife. That sounds like fun. Well, we're going to do this one first, because I do like doing this one first. South of Disney Territorial Forces, yeah, we've got to do that too. The threat of German invasion behind us, the formation of more formal armies required, through, though an army may be forward to some. Form, reform the South Rhodesian Staff Corps. Well, the South Rhodesia is a small population, the need for compulsory military training is a hard reality for South Rhodesia. Achieve standardization. Oh, we definitely need to do this one. South Rhodesia Army is in poor state, and some with arms range from those using the Great War to modern driven firearms. Standardization is key to this man's army. Mm, Southern Rhodesia Air Corps. An integrated air wing has been created to provide greater synergy between the ground and air force of South Rhodesia. Encourage South African immigration. We must make or it's easier, more accommodating and preferred immigrants. Keep the gears of society running. We need new oil for this machine. We should track some immigrants from the most logical source. South Africa. Do we want to go to war? No. So far, we're doing okay. Um, this land is our land. The home of the Thor fathers and the home of our children. The land where we still, the land that we call home. This is Rhodesia and the Rhodesia is our land. It will continue to be our land to the end of the earth. The Rhodesia never dies as long as the Rhodesian spirit lives on in every single one of our citizens. That happened in 1938, everybody. We may want some uh, field hospitals, too. Bob Burgos. Cool. Of course, next I do want to do the draft of Constitution. Expanding the native reserves. When Southern Rhodesia was integrated into South Africa, the region which historically had a much larger land, amount of land designated the native population, still only had to adhere to the South African Native Land Act of 1913 that mandated that the nat native reserves' lands should be brought down to 8% of the total land mass. This threshold was never hit because of the huge disparity, but over the years, native reserve lands shrunk heavily and the reserves had become overcrowded, forcing their inhabitants to similarly overcrowd slums in the urban areas under poor conditions. Now that we're no longer bound to South Africa's legislation, voices have risen to rectify these measures. However, a lot of the forfeit reserve lands have been bought by white farmers and all those willing to vacate uh, their property when the government offers to buy it. Expropriation is an option, but it wouldn't be popular if we expropriate whites in the interest of the natives, so there's some in the government which should say we only recover land voluntarily. We can't do that. Uh, we'll do that one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what else do we want to do? Draft constitution, and you know, we'll do municipal authority. So efficiency gain, negotiate with the railway unions. Well, the rules ruled in favor, ruled against. Infrastructure construction speed, resource efficiency gain versus daily political power, division organization. Oh my god. Salisbury line. Industrial conciliation act, huh? Light infantry doctrine. Refining the hit and run tactics used in the civil wars resulted in the birth of South Rhodesian commander units, raising native regiments. 
They had on the grounds of the need for bodies of South African or not South Rhodesian territorial forces, regardless of color or creed, with some commodities being made. Motorized infantry. The concept of motorized infantry has been welcomed by the Southern Rhodesian territorial forces, with the ability to deploy and redeploy rapidly to allow for great synergy with its infantry hit and run tactics. Reinstate the African rifles. Further initiatives have been implemented to raise draw more from the native populations with training and trust given to our native brethren. Colored NCOs. The need for trusted uh, colored NCOs is paramount. Uh, with the middleman needed between white officers and the black soldiers to ensure basic use of use of, blah, 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 unit cohesion. Hey, more stability. You know, we're actually at 100% already. Look at that. Light armor. Further development of the motorized infantry doctrine has led to the use of light tanks to provide much needed punch as required on modern battlefield and palmichetta. Palmichetta, so showing a phrase meaning all together, is the motto of the newly raised Celos Scouts, named after British explorer Frederick Celos. The mixed race unit has been created to be the creme de la creme of the Southern Rhodesian Territorial Forces. Attract wildlife tourism. Unnatural wildlife is a gift. Knowing this, we can use it to our advantage by gaining some extra revenue by attracting safari tourism. I think that'd be great. Establish Southern Rhodesia Currency Board. The better managed currency situation here in Rhodesia will be established. Uh, currency Board, which will guide this process. Fine, you can have the PP. 50 PP. In all honesty, you have only three. Build faster this time. Good hospital ones are nice. And what else? Oh, RWU Salisbury Municipal Authority. <coughs> oh, you're going about red flop. Let's go ahead. Um, stability max factories in a state recovery rate. Uh, I do like this one. Stability and whatnot. It's nice. Um, oh, we can legalize sweepstaking. Sweepstaking sh should be legalized, but provides with a large amount of much needed income. Of course, the action is necessary, which continue to grow our new economy. That'd be great. I'm not sure we're gonna really support all that stuff. Plain stuff. Well, we'll see. Are we supposed to get an event here? No, we still don't want to go to war. There you go. We got seven divisions, that's not bad. Well, I guess we're not getting in the event at all, so. Hey, if you enjoyed the first video, well, there, there might only be two since we're going to go all the way into 1945, apparently. Please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Let's see what else we can do with Rhodesia. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.